What is going on, everybody? It is the Frost, and we are back again for another episode of NXT NXT uh, NXT review for January thirty first, two thousand eighteen, as they call it, the NXT Takeover Philadelphia Aftermath. Which, as anyone else knows, this episode was actually taped before NXT Philadelphia Takeover. So the crowd is actually into this game, this episode of NXT, than they were on Monday and Tuesday, because by the time Monday and Tuesday came around. Philadelphia and everybody watching WWE this week has probably wrestled I, I, out for wrestling. So, five days of action from Philadelphia. We're going to expect this for New Orleans and Chicago and Brooklyn and Los Angeles this year with the five takeovers that we have coming this year. I remember when these were first started back when, I think it was Brooklyn was the first time. Yeah, Brooklyn was the first time we were out of full sale. So they taped an episode of NXT before Brooklyn. So you could go and take an extra week, like take an extra few days to actually collect themselves before they would um, start the tapings for the next episode. And I believe every single one of those matches were throwaway matches. Every one of them you had Becky Lynch and Dana Brooke and Emma and Charlotte in a match, and Emma ended up winning the match by accident because Becky Lynch pretty much just got knocked out from the Emma Mike sandwich. That was then. This is now. We had a Bate versus Tyler Bate versus Roderick Strong match that could have been easily on NXT Takeover itself, but they relegated it to tonight's episode for the UK Championship Number One Contendership. We had Lacey Evans versus um, Nikki Cross and the return of TM61. To others, including, I know JD from, JD from New York, and I believe others have asked for a mid-card title, until they come up with something for the UK brand, the UK t Championship is your secondary title to the NXT Championship. Of course, this will be the first American, the second American, I believe, to go for the title. So, what I would like to see is, like, I would like to see Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne, if Pete Dunne was to lose the championship to Strong or Bate, whoever he faces, I would like to see him or Joseph Connors or Wolfgang or Trent Seven all be able to go for the NXT championship. I know Strong, um, Trent Seven was in the NXT title tournament, that little match he had against um, Killian Dane. But, but that was about it. I would like to see other guys from the UK brand be used a lot more if you're not going to have a UK division like you expected it. Maybe they're just going to infuse it all. I know Tyler Bate made his 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 return to 205 Live last night. Hopefully that's a one-time thing because he did lose to TJP. And next week on 205 Live, they're going to have Roderick Strong there as well. Probably taking the fall to a head day with Tommy because I believe those guys had a heck of a match a couple of weeks ago. A couple months ago in NXT, and maybe this is a way to um, build up Hideo Tommy a little bit in that 16-man tournament, and to give people exposure to Roderick Strong, which doesn't really need it. Nothing much else happened here except for the three matches: Bate versus Strong for the UK title, number one contendership; Crash versus Evans after Lacey Evans made that scathing rant on everybody in the uh, women's division, except for of course Shayna Baszler because Shayna Baszler. Cut her off before she could say anything. And of course, TM61 made their return. Nice to see those guys back. Typical, you know, usual throwaway show for the most part. I mean, Bate versus Strong was an excellent match. Definitely. It is kind of sad that these guys got bumped to this show. I wish it could have been on an NXT taping that wasn't from Philadelphia. For the f simple fact is, I think this match was good. But I think they could have gave us more. But it was a number one contenders match. I could easily, if Strong or Bait would win this match and go on to face Pete Dunne and won the title, they could. I could easily see these two highlight and make a UK championship match at TakeOver New Orleans for that championship. I would really like to, since it is pretty much the secondary title in NXT, I would like to see it defended more on New Orleans than just Chicago, I believe, and that's it. Show started off with Nikki Cross versus Lacey Evans. Nikki Cross was just sitting there in the corner. They bang the bell and she just comes out and hits a crossbody on Lacey Evans and she starts beating the crap out of Lacey Evans until Lacey Evans finally gets up and hits her with a roundhouse kick. Evans ch starts coming outside and gets dropped and then trapped in the um, apron and assaulted by Nikki Cross. Cross has a hold of Evans' hair, but Evans sweeps her. Like, Evan, Nikki Cross is on the, on the, on the um, corner, in the corner. She has crossed, she has Lacey Evans by the hair. She's about ready to try and do something and wreck her off top off the top rope. Lacey Evans grabs her leg, sweeps her off of the off of the 
ropes and then hits a cross, then gets a two count for that. Evans later in the match gets her in the middle of the corner, in the um, down lane, sitting down in the corner, does a lift up Bronco Buster type move onto her. She does go for a moonsault, but that is missed by her when Cross moves. Cross is going starts going crazy on Evans. Match ends with a swinging fisherman's neck breaker for a two for um oh yeah for a three count, and your winner is Nikki Cross. So. Nikki Cross, I, I, I kind of wonder why they had, like, I don't, they're supposed to be pushing Lacey Evans, that's why she had that big scathing promo for the rest of the women's division, she's going to be this big heel, but why would you have her lose, like, or take over to Nikki Cross, who I think is coming up in the next, like, by, by New Orleans, I'm sure all the sanity will be up. post match Cross did a good couple more shots in before she got taken over, she got pulled away by, by the ref. So I don't know what they're going to be doing with Nikki Cross. I would have loved, I would have loved to see Nikki Cross in the Royal Rumble instead of maybe a Kyrie Sane or or um, Ember Moon. It would have been cool to see Nikki Cross come out there and just wreak havoc all over the um, women's who the women who were in the match, saying, "Hey, I'm here and I'm going to be coming for you guys eventually, even if I don't win this thing." Then we had, they talked about, they did show us highlights of the undisputed era and all them. During this match, during this show, how they won their tag team championship match. And then they talked about the Adam Cole, Alistair Black match and how Sanity got involved. They did they did put a video, they did show a video of what happened after with Fish and O'Reilly questioning what happened. The plan was going all well. We, we beat the Authors of Pain. We had this guy dead to rights. We were going to take out Alistair Black. Then Sanity ruined everything and Adam Cole tells them Sanity will pay. So next week it has been announced that Sanity's Alexander Wolf and and Eric Young will be taking on the Undisputed, Undisputed Era for the NXT Tag Team Championships. Wonder where you're like wondering where is Adam Cole? What is Adam Cole going to be doing in this? And where is Killian and Dane? Those two will be having a match next week as well. So all three members of Sanity and all three members of Undisputed Era in two separate matches will be involved in NXT next week. Looking forward to that. I'm pretty sure they'll be um, doing the tapings for NXT this week. Probably this, um, it's probably tomorrow. I'm pretty sure tomorrow or Friday, like tomorrow and Friday, actually, they're going to be doing the tapings. I could be totally wrong. I will not be looking at those, so I have a little bit more of a surprise of what's going to happen. We will not probably, we probably won't see a tag team um, title change just because that's the Undisputed Era should have the titles right now. They should definitely keep the titles until the War Machine is ready. Or Heavy Machinery is ready, or yeah, either War Machine or Heavy Machinery is ready to take the titles off of them. So Undisputed Air is going to beat Sanity next week. This is me predicting it. There's no uh, results up or anything yet. There's no tapings happening tonight as far as I know. So I'm predicting Undisputed Air will go over Sanity in a clean fashion. And that will probably be the last time Un Sanity is really seen in NXT since they should be coming up. They have nothing else to do. If they lose next week to Sanity, they have nothing left to do. So, looking forward to the match though. We were supposed to have this a couple weeks ago, of course, until Sanity got destroyed by the Undisputed Era, which led to Roderick Strong and Aleister Black taking their place at NXT a couple weeks ago in studio, in center stage in Atlanta, which they will be back for the next set of taping. So, if you didn't like, if you don't want, want to see Full Sail as much as before, you won't be seeing that until March into WrestleMania weekend. We will be seeing center stage from here and from here until mid March, maybe like end of March. TM61 versus the Ely Brothers. Um, I am not seeing the Ely Brothers much at all. It's nice to see Nick and Shane back. Nick starts with uh, with I guess Ariel uh, 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 Ariel. Ely, weird name to have for a uh, dude, but, and Knife Edge Chops, Shane tags in standing Moonsault, Fish Drop Combo, Moonsault over the top row by, um, I believe it would be Shane who did this, to the Ely Brothers, Ely Brothers with Twin Magic while the um, ref's not looking, which I guess the only way you can tell them apart because they are the identical twins is one has a tattoo on his right shoulder and the other has a tattoo on his left shoulder, which is a little bit easier, I guess. In the grand scheme of things, when they get up, because like the Usos, you really can't tell the difference. But with like, like they mentioned the Usos and the Bella Twins as being successful twins. Well, like the Usos, you can't tell much of a difference just because that's it. I still can't tell the difference between Jimmy and Jay, but we and Nikki Bella, it's kind of easy to tell because 
um, one, cosmetic changes for Nikki, and two, they don't have the same, it, like, I don't know if it was, they're not identical twins completely, but they don't have the same facial features, even if Nikki didn't have that cosmetic, um, improvement, I'm pretty sure you can still tell the Bella twins apart, I don't know if, like, Brie or Nikki had facial surgery or something to make them look different, but they don't really have, they really don't look, like, different, but I'm getting off topic. The Ely brothers do take the Ely brothers do take over from here with that advantage. They do they do beat up on Nick for a while until Shane finally gets the tag in and he cleans out. House two for one in the corner with a cannon then a cannonball. Backdrop by Shane tags at Nick. Moonson off the top rope for a two count. Match Match ends when they hit the what Mario and I would call Thunder Valley. I could not even remember what their tag team finisher name was. They've been gone for a year, so that's my bad right there. But Thunder Valley for the three count and TM61 gets a nice new nice win on the way back. They do cut cut back after I believe a small little break to Charlie St. Crowd or Charlie Roboto because she's just awful. And she didn't really say anything, she just had the mic in front of TM61 and they say we are the mighty and the mighty do not kneel. So there is that. They did go over everything that happened in NXT TakeOver. I do stand by what I said. I think they made a mistake in not having Andrade C and Almas drop the title to Johnny Gargano. And then, you know, that then they did show the attack by Tommaso Ciampa. And I still, a couple days later, still say that, that that the impact of that attack by, Johnny, by Tommaso Ciampa to Johnny Gargano has nowhere close to the impact it should have had. Had Johnny Gargano been NXT champion on the uh, on the stage, wife by his side, title in the air, shot to the back with the um with the crutch, this moment, this big huge moment that Johnny Gargano is supposed to be having as the NXT champion, ruined by Tommaso Ciampa, that wasn't there, and that's because they made the decision to keep it on uh, almost. Even though he did make his main roster debut last on th on Sunday as the NXT champion, still made no sense why you kept the title on. On and on, on Johnny Cianomas. They could have played the story up as he lost the title on Saturday. He's coming to he's coming into the Royal Rumble to try and avenge and become the number one contender to the to the WWE Championship or you know one of the two titles. They didn't do that, and we'll have to see what happens. Really intrigued to see where they go from from here for NXT starting next week, which will be kicking off the their road to WrestleMania. Raw and SmackDown kicked off their road to WrestleMania. This week is not really a kickoff for NXT. This is just a review of what happened in NXT's TakeOvers Philadelphia. I guess I guess you can say if Bate and Roderick Strong's I mean Roderick Strong's match winner goes to NXT on uh, TakeOver New Orleans, which was not made official, it was just the number one contenders match with a later to date to be named later. I'm hoping will be at TakeOver, but that is so long away, I don't know. They could build it up and have a couple good segments for these two on NXT if they were to do that. But who would you think would go on to face Tyler, um, face, uh, Pete Dunne? Tyler Bate or Roderick Strong? I wanted to, like, before I even, like, before I even watched this match, I was like, Tyler Bate has had two matches, he's had three matches overall with Roger, with Tyler, with Pete Dunne. He won the first one at the UK tournament, he lost at Chicago, and then he lost in December in an excellent match. They don't need the rehat, like, that's enough right there. And unlike regular WWE TV, they spread it out within 12 months. You had January, middle of the month, middle of the year, and the final year of the month of the year for that tournament, for that um, feud. Beautiful, beautiful way to do that on WWE. If they if Bate and Dunn were on WWE TV, they would have had the three matches, three day, three months, three months in a row, and it wouldn't have felt as special. This is what makes NXT so great is that this, even if Roderick Strong and Pete Dunn or Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn happen at NXT Takeover New Orleans, they're gonna have enough time to build this feud up instead of just being like, well. We're going to have it at these next set of tapings, and that's how that's going to go. I'm hoping not. I mean, I won't be disappointed if it's the main event match, and it has, like, half the half the episode of NXT is the winner of this match and Pete Dunne for the UK Championship in a 30-plus minute um, barn burner and the best match on NXT TV so far this year, and probably will be the best match on NXT TV this year. 
So we will have to wait and see. But we did have that after the um, NXT after the TM61 thing, they did make the Dane versus Cole match official for next week. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Dane and Cole, and then of course the tag team championship match. How that all works out, we will have to see. Maybe. Dane and Cole happens because those are two matches that could be a main event on two separate episodes of NXT. Um, so it's nice to see that Dane and Cole are going to be put on TV and see how they could go because Killian Dane is a diamond in the rough for, for WWE and this guy. Once they do it because you know it's going to happen because no faction is forever. When they break up the sanity either on WWE TV or they break away Killian Dane and keep him in NXT because I think Eric Young should be like Eric Young. Could move up to WWE main roster right now. I don't know about Alexander Wolf, but I know Eric Young. If he wanted, if they wanted to, they could bring him up and just leave Wolf and Dane down below. Nikki Cross could also probably be used well on WWE TV if they would use her right. I don't, I don't trust WWE TV though. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with those guys. So we had Strong and Roger Strong and Tyler Bate UK Championship number one contenders match. This was a decent match. This was a, it left you something to be desired. Like the winner of this match could go on to beat Tyler, Pete Dunne, and then these two would have a rematch later in the year for the UK title at Chicago or Brooklyn or Los Angeles, which will be at Brooklyn four years in a row. Can we please move the SummerSlam somewhere else? Bate tries to get out, like, they lock up and strong with a wrist lock. Bate tries to get out of it. He is just so, like, agile and so nimble, Tyler Bate. This guy is, like, 21, 20, 21, 22. I think he's 21 right now. This guy has got such a future ahead of him. It's not even funny. It's going to be sad that they relegate him to 205 Live after his little stint in NXT, like, uh, off and on. It's going to be so sad that they, like, take him from, from NXT and all these great matches and put him on 205 Live. I guess from hearing from JD who watched it too if I lied, because I don't, that him and TJP had an excellent match. It was just the crowd was out of it because you have SmackDown, Mixed Match Challenge, and then 205 Live. If you want 205 Live to succeed before we get into this match completely, put it on before SmackDown. Put it on before SmackDown. Bump SmackDown from 11, from like, bump, you have 205 Live, SmackDown, then the Mixed Match Challenge, and boom. You have a better chance at, uh, at them succeeding with 205 Live. Just saying. Drop kick by Bay, then, go, then gets strong up in the airplane spin, but does not last for long. Usually, when he does the airplane spin, he does like a 20 like rotations and then he stops, like does the I'm tired, gets back up and does it the reverse way like 20 or 30 more times. Didn't really do that this time because Roger Strong got out of it no, no long. Double on um, the. Tyler Bate ends up on the outside of the apron. He come, he tries to come inside with like it looked like a slingshot spear, but gets caught by Tyler by um, Roger Strong, who ends up hitting with a double underhook backbreaker off the ropes. Nasty looking spot. These backbreakers that he gets from Roger Strong just look brutal. Roger Strong is definitely king of the backbreakers in WWE completely. Exchange. They start exchanging chops. Strong hits a pendulum backbreaker for a two, so he's like really working on that back. Dueling chance for these two early on in the match. This match was definitely great. And the thing, this was great. This match happened before NXT TakeOver Philadelphia, where you had all these great matches. And every match on NXT TakeOver Philadelphia was great. I was just disappointed with the ending, and I will stick to that gun to this day until I see anything otherwise. Strong, dueling chance for the two. Strong catches bait with another backbreaker, then tosses bait into the corner. He just picks Tyler Bate up, and this guy, he's got to be 200, like, um, 200, like, 195 pounds, but he picks him up and just throws him into the corner like he's just a wet, like, a wet, like, a little toy or something. It was just, like, with little effort. He got a two count out of that. Strong in control, back from break, after they come back from break. Bate has Bate in the bow and arrow stretch. Nice looking move. I don't think I've ever seen anybody, I know it wasn't going to win the match, but I don't think I've ever seen anybody. Someone can link me to a video of somebody doing that. I've never seen anybody actually win with the bow and arrow stretch where they have him against their back and they just stretch him out. Definitely awesome looking move. Bait fights back, but Bait with a bang and he does hit the bang and bop with fake out punch. Definitely, definitely one of his better moves. It's like, I'm over here, boom, right in the face. Uppercuts by Bait. Boot to the face by Bait off the ropes. Bait's running uppercut. Again, Bait with a knee shot to the strong off the top, then a German suplex for a two count. Elbow, elbows by Strong, Bait catches them into the Exploder Suplex. 
standing shooting stud press, which he did not get on Percy Watson because Nigel McGinnis, of course, was not on commentary tonight because it was before TakeOver and he was ill. And if he's still ill, speedy recovery, I hope you're back because you make NXT great too. But Percy Watson definitely, definitely needs, is improving on what he does, so I'm going to give him credit on that. He did mention that during like this shooting star press, he barely got any of Roderick Strong, so that's why he probably could kick out a two, which definitely, definitely that nice little edge right there. Suplex attempt blocked by Bait. Bait tries to kick Strong, who catches the foot while he's in the while he's on the top rope because this is supposed to be a superplex off the top rope. He kicks. He pretty much fights Roderick Strong off. He sits down. Tries to Roger Strong runs into the corner, but tries to and Bait tries to kick him away. Bait catches um Strong catches it and just rips him, just rips him off the rope and then hits it, then picks him up and hits another backbreaker. Rolling kick by Bait. Bait bounces off the ropes like his little short his um lateral where he jumps and hits the ropes with his lats. Comes off, tries to go for a um lariat, misses the first time and rolls up by Strong for a one. Then he goes for it again and hits this time for a two count. This is awesome chant. Bait goes to the Tyler Driver 97, but he can't get it off because of the backbreakers have been really, really messing his back up, which definitely is great storytelling for these two. Backbreakers all night long have been just like killing Tyler Bates back, so he goes for the Tyler Driver and he just can't get it done. Definitely love the selling right there. I hate when we have a match that's going deep into deep into overtime, if, if uh, to say, if you want to say that. And the guys are coming down for the last gasps. And someone's like, whose back has been worked on the entire match? Goes up for like some kind of move that their back is going to need to be used in. And they just pull it off with ease. Great selling for Tyler Bate. He is really good at his selling when he does. Bate tries to roll up strong but only gets a two count. Mat and match ends when... He, when you see a running, I believe it was a running knee by Strong in the corner. He picks, grabs Bate and just spikes him on, onto the mat. And then hits the heartache. As they call it, end of heartache, as they called it, for a three count. And your winner moving on to face Tyler Pete Dunn at a later date. They did not make a confirmation of this. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I know it's months away still, and it's only going to be February tomorrow. I'm hoping this is going to be an NXT TakeOver, NXT TakeOver New Orleans, because this match would tear the house down and could possibly be a match of the year candidate between Tyler Bate and um, Roderick Strong and Pete Dunn. I hope it is. Where, where Tyler Bate goes from here, I'm hoping he like, I hope he sticks around. I'm hoping they're not going to relegate him to 205 Live. Pretty much it's NXT, Raw, SmackDown, or SmackDown, Raw, and, and 205 Live. 205 Live is beneath Tyler Bate. I'm hoping he sticks around NXT for a bit. If not, put him on SmackDown. Or if you're going to do this UK division, get this UK division up and running. You're wasting the ta you'll be wasting Tyler Bates talent by having him go to 205 Live and let's 205 Live with Maverick, um, whatever his name, uh, Rockstar Spud with his new name, which I'll get an end on on Saturday. Um, so after overall two throwaway matches, which we knew they were going to be, Lacey Evans and Nikki Cross and TM61's return, which I thought was just going to be a normal squash match for a team coming back, but the Ely brothers did give them some. Offense, some 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 offense and made them work for their win. And then you had a great match here that could have been, if it wasn't for Cassius Ono versus Velveteen Dream being put in there, this match should have been on NXT TakeOver Philadelphia, giving them a couple more minutes. And, you know, it really this match really got the crowd in Philadelphia hyped for what they were going to be seeing not too long after this match happened, which I would say probably an hour they tape this stuff before the pre-show happens because the pre-show takes place in the same arena and you don't see any action or the crowd really doing anything. So I'd say this match really got the crowd hyped for NXT TakeOver Philadelphia. I am all tuckered out from this entire week and I will not have another video up until Saturday which will be on news, rumors, and predictions on Saturday where we talk about the Ronda Rousey plans for WrestleMania which I am not happy with what the rumors are saying and how, why, and the fact that they ruined this big time deal of the Women's Royal Rumble just for Ronda Rousey, and I will give my full opinion on that. The new GM, well, I'll talk about the new GM on 205 Live and what they're doing with the Cruiserweight Championship, and so much more that will be happening, hopefully, as we get through the week. But that is going to be all. My name is The France. Make sure to find me on Twitter at The France. 
Find me on twitch.tv slash the um, frost08. And make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit the, give me a comment in the section below. What's your thoughts on NXT coming out of TakeOver Philadelphia? And what's your thoughts on TM61 coming back? And where, where and when do you think that we're going to see Tyler Bate uh, not Tyler Bate, but Pete Dunne versus Roderick Strong for the United Kingdom Championship. I'm hoping it's an NXT TakeOver New Orleans, but that is no here nor there. We will see, hopefully, and remember the tapings for next for the next set of tapings, which I believe are going to be Thursday and Friday, are going to be happening this week in Atlanta, Georgia. So, we'll see where they go from here. But until then, I'm getting out of here. I am tired. I am exhausted from five days of wrestling in Philadelphia. And I will see you guys on Saturday for news, rumors, and predictions, which I think we're coming up with a name. I think I got it locked down. I just got to get that going, and I got to work on my own theme because I know using Throwing UI 8-bit is probably not the best thing to use. But until then, I am out of here.